Okay, uh, the two videos in this series um, is uh, aimed at demonstrating how to carry out weighted least squares regression in SPSS using a standard deviation function to construct weighted observations. So in this particular demonstration, I'm going to focus on a simple regression or demonstrate a simple regression uh, using weighted least squares. In my next video, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out uh, weighted least squares uh, in the context of multiple regression. Um, I do think it's important to note that SBSS does allow you to perform weighted least squares regression through the use of its uh, WLS option, and so this is the site right here. And uh, But this does require you to identify uh, the independent variable that is likely contributing to heteroscedasticity, and uh, with this particular approach uh, to uh, weighted least squares, it involves essentially uh, weighting your observations based on uh, the variable is contributing to heteroscedasticity. So this particular demonstration is not uh, utilizing that particular strategy, but rather we're using a standard deviation function to reweight the observations in the data set uh, when we're carrying out our analysis. So the example is actually, uh, or the examples are coming from this particular website right here. And just to kind of show you, uh, this is where it's located. And uh, the example in this video we're going to focus on uh, is coming from this. This is at uh, Penn State uh, Everly College of Science. And uh, there's a really nice presentation on weighted least squares uh, there. So I thought I would pivot off of this. Uh, all of the demonstrations are actually using MATLAB instead of SPSS. So I thought I would just kind of use the uh, steps involved and uh, show you how to perform the operations using SPSS. So this video is going to be using uh, the computer assisted learning data set here and then uh, my next video I'm going to demonstrate multiple regression by using the home price data set uh, right here. So uh, also uh, it is important to note that uh, the particular um, weighting scheme that we're talking about uh, like I said it's, it's discussed right here. It's also discussed in reference to um, a tool uh, with the STATA program, it's uh, WLS0, that you can download and, and run uh, using STATA. And uh, there's a presentation show, you know, discussing how to do that uh, with STATA at this location right here. Also, Phil Ender uh, discusses uh, the use of this approach right here, or references of the approach there. Uh, there's also another example um, where there's a, uh, just a brief reference to the use of um, uh, the standard deviation function to construct weights uh, in this book right here. It's a, again, it's referencing STATA. Uh, so I've been asked before um, about references related to this particular approach, and so I just wanted to highlight uh, a few of them. So let's start off by uh, looking at our data. This is the SPSS data file right here. Obviously, it's opened up in a PowerPoint, and I'll walk you through in a second. But uh, to carry out the weighted least squares uh, using uh, the standard deviation function to reweight our cases, there are several steps to kind of note. First, we want to regress our y variable onto our x's and generate unstandardized residuals and fitted y values. Second, we want to compute the absolute value of the residuals, and these are serving as estimators of conditional standard deviations. Uh, next, we will regress the absolute value of the residuals onto the fitted Ys from the original model, and we're going to save the predicted uh, Ys or the fitted Ys from the standard deviation function. So that's what it, that's what where we uh, get our name right here, the standard deviation function. And then we construct a weight variable uh, by taking uh, one divided by uh, the square of the fitted Y value from the standard deviation function, and then we perform our regression analysis by regressing. Our, um, our, you know, basically carrying out our original regression, but including the weight variable. So um, this particular PowerPoint kind of walks you through uh, the steps, uh, but I thought I would just kind of demonstrate this in real time, and you can download the PowerPoint um, if you want uh, a little bit more detail. So uh, I'll open up SPSS, and so here it is with the actual data set. And so what I'll start off by doing is carrying out the basic regression analysis. So we'll go regression linear. And uh, the dependent variable is, um, uh, or the dependent variable is cost. The independent variable is number of responses. I'll click on save right here, and I'm going to save the unstandardized residuals and the unstandardized predicted values. We'll click on continue and then on OK. And you can see we have our basic uh, OLS model. So you can see there's our R square value, 0 0.889. 
uh, and uh, you can see uh, the model um, fit right here in terms of statistical significance. Uh, we all can also see down here we have our regression slope, standard error, um, you know, there's our standard um, a standardized coefficient and our t value and, and so forth. So this is the basic uh, least squares regression model. And what we want to do is to uh, reweight our cases for the po for the possibility that there is heteroscedasticity um, in our um, in our errors or our residuals. Um, just to kind of show you what that might look like in terms of the heteroscedasticity, I'm going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues, scatter dot. Click on simple scatter, and I'm going to put the predicted values uh, right here, the fitted y values right here, and the residuals on the y axis. Click on OK, and as you're looking at this, this is the, the basic um, plot. And you can see right here, um, you know, this is the uh, sum of the residuals, uh, and you can see kind of this fanning out of the residuals. And so that would be uh, evidence that we have some um, uh, uh, heteroscedasticity that may be present. Uh, in the data, and in particular in our residuals. So what we're going to do then is we're going to reweight the cases um, in our data set. So what we'll do is uh, I'll just kind of go back to the original uh, file here so you can see we have our fitted values and our residuals. So the next step is we want to construct uh, a new variable that is the absolute value of the residuals. And we're basically kind of estimating, we're going to be estimating uh, the residuals um, associated with the fitted values. But first off, what we're going to do is go to transform compute variable and uh, I'm just going to create a variable called ABS RES for absolute value of the residuals. And uh, so the target variable is just, you know, it's arbitrary, but the numeric expression has to be correct. So I'm going to type in ABS uh, and then inside a parenthesis uh, I'm going to uh, either type or move this over right here and then uh, in parenthesis and so now we've got our numeric expression and we'll click on OK. And uh, at this point now we have the absolute values of the residuals. And so now what we're going to do is to uh, generate the standard deviation function. So to do that we will now go to analyze regression linear. And I'm going to reset this and put the absolute value of the residuals into the dependent box and the fitted Y values from our original model into the independence box. Next, click on Save and Unstandardized uh, Predicted Values, and uh, then we'll click on Continue and on OK. And so now we have the standard deviation function. Okay, so um, you can see right here there's our intercept and our slope for the standard deviation function. And so at this point in our data set, you'll see that we have the predicted values. So these are the predicted standard deviations um, at each uh, level of fitted Y. And so the next step then is just to construct the weights to, uh, based off of these um, uh, fitted Y values from the standard deviation function. So to do that, we'll go to transform compute variable. I'm going to reset this, and now I'm just going to call it weight. Next, we'll type in uh, 1 divided by, or backslash for divided by, and then I'm going to uh, basically uh, move this over, and then if we can say 2 asterisk right here, and uh, essentially what's going to happen is, is that SPSS um, is, is essentially going to square the predicted or fitted uh, Y values from the standard deviation function and then divide that, those uh, squared uh, fitted values by, um, or basically uh, divide that into one. So we'll click on OK. And so now we have our weight variable. So this is it right here. And so you can see basically when we ran our original uh, regression analysis, uh, it treated each uh, case as offering, uh, you know, essentially one unit of information uh, to the prediction model. And so, in this particular case right here, we've assigned, we've reweighted uh, the contributions to the model. So now, what we'll do is we'll go to analyze regression linear, and we'll reset. And so now we'll click on uh, weight. We're going to move it down here to the weight box. We'll move. Um, cost back to the dependent and number of responses back to the independent box. And if you want to, um, you know, further uh, e evaluate how well we did in terms of um, uh, removing heteroscedasticity, uh, you can also uh, click back on predicted values. And uh, in the presentation uh, at this website right here, they actually suggested uh, that you click on studentized residuals right here. So we're going to click on studentized right here and continue and then on OK. 
And so now you can see we've carried out our basic uh, weighted least squares regression right here. So you can see, um, you know, this is uh, it right here. And so now you can see there's our regression slope and our standard error and, and t-value and so forth. And you'll notice that um, that uh, you know our standard error is definitely um, a little bit different from what we had before. You know, previously uh, our standard error from our original model was um, you know 0.365. And uh, in this particular case, it looks like our standard error uh, is now 0 0.370, so it, it uh, increased a bit. Uh, you also see a little bit of a difference in terms of the, uh, the regression coefficients. Um, now, just kind of going back and checking to see if we have any evidence of heteroskedasticity, we'll go back and run another residuals plot where we'll use a standardized residual, a studentized residual from. Um, our weighted least squares regression and our unstandardized predicted value from that model as well. Click on OK. And so now you can see a lot more um, evenness in terms of uh, the dispersion of the residuals across the fitted uh, Y values.